Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a cybersecurity career Q&A. I haven't done one of these in a while, so I figured since the end of year is coming, I would wrap things up a little bit with this career Q&A. And for anyone who wants to ask a question to be answered in the next Q&A, feel free to drop it in the comments below and I will document those somewhere to answer all together. All right, first things first, how do you like your new job and what's your experience been like so far? So for those of you who may not know, I recently started a new job in the beginning of this year, so it's not so new anymore, but at this point I've been at the job for about nine to ten months, which sounds like a much longer time than it is, but but overall I really like it. I currently work as a security analyst for I guess you would call it a SaaS or software company, but they also have other products, I guess, that aren't just SaaS. But overall I really like it. Um I think the highlight of it is just working with my team and my manager. I think I'm just really lucky to have the most helpful teammate as well as the most supportive manager, which honestly is kind of hard to come by depending on how long you've been in tech and in the career in general but over my last three and a half almost four years working in cybersecurity, i've actually had five or six managers because i was in a rotation program and i've had managers leave and then i've had intermittent managers and then i've had my new manager come in eventually and yeah basically just even the last three years i've had five six seven managers so i've kind of seen the gambit in my very short career so far so i do think the people aspect of things is one of the most important aspects of your job and and how much you enjoy working your job on a day-to-day -day basis second question is how did you get into cybersecurity? so i came from a software engineering background i i was pretty much mostly just looking for software engineering roles after i graduated college i got my degree in information science and technology but my school did offer a certification for computer security and digital forensics and as an IST major there was only like two or three extra classes that I had to take that were network security related and digital forensics related as well as I believe a computer architecture class that I had to take anyway so basically I decided to take that certification because it was kind of like an extra boost in my resume and I had to take electives anyway so I might as well choose some interesting ones since I felt like digital forensics was was a cooler sounding elective on my list and then from there I went to the Grace Hopper conference my senior year and at that point I was looking for full-time jobs and this was fall of senior year so fall semester and I was primarily interviewing again for software engineering roles I talked to one company who which was the offer that I ended up accepting and they had a new cybersecurity rotation program that was coming out and it was really interesting to me I felt like maybe I could always just go back to software engineering if I wanted to and this was like a new step in a whole another realm of tech that I never expected to get into and yeah I've been here ever since even when I was looking for my second job I was also primarily looking for software engineering slash cybersecurity now but fun fact was I think I got the most offers as well as the most interviews from software engineering roles so and that may or may not be the fact that cybersecurity roles typically tend to look for more years of experience just from my experience of looking at the roles I was applying to and I wasn't applying to anything fancy it was just cybersecurity analyst roles, cybersecurity engineering roles, and software engineering roles which I ended up getting a lot more interviews and offers for software engineering compared to cybersecurity so also something to keep in mind for anyone who is kind of flip-flopping between the two hopefully this gives some hope that that you can actually return to and from each sector uh, depending on the roles that you apply to and for those of you who are looking to get into cybersecurity i actually have my new course which is your first job in cybersecurity where i go over all the steps that i took to get my first job in cybersecurity my interview prep guide as well as tips on interviewing my cybersecurity resume and cover letter networking the actual job search in general so hopefully the course can give you a holistic view of everything that you need to get that first job in cybersecurity which is always the hardest to get your foot in the door for if you're interested in the course or any of my career resources you can check them out in the link in the description what are your long-term career goals there's always a fun question to answer i feel like because my career goals change all the time and i don't really have like a set permanent career goal i'm pretty sure at one point i wanted to climb the corporate ladder and become like a well it depends what company you're in but like a, a managing director for in the finance side and then a i think like a vp or just like a director in the tech side but nowadays i don't really have very many career this sounds so bad um, i don't have that many career aspirations to become a people manager i would prefer to stay a individual contributor which i think there's a very fine distinction between the two um some people 
want to go into management upper management and i think that's completely reasonable and and is a very good thing and it's also a great way to grow as a person when you're able to manage people and and just deal with everything that has to do with that people management side but personally i think i would prefer to say as an individual contributor whether it's on a team working full-time whether it's as a contractor whether it's as a freelancer basically i'm very open to the flexibility of work and i don't really mind if it's not a full-time w2 job and at one point i did some freelance writing and that was something that i liked being able to kind of complete on projects being able to contribute in a way that is flexible to me but also provide some structure to my days and my weeks if there was a way for me to go part-time in any kind of cybersecurity job i would love that I think that would be the perfect blend of flexibility, especially down the line with me spending more time on my personal projects, which for now I think it's manageable, but at some point I do want to kind of step back and reevaluate where I want to put the most of my energy into and my time. And I think even cybersecurity consulting or, or just being an independent contractor for a cybersecurity role or a cybersecurity company would probably be a very good option. Any new certifications or skills that you're learning? So I've discussed this before, but I was but I was originally planning on getting my next certification as my CISSP, and that was something that I was solely studying for. But obviously, I don't have those set years of experience yet. But you still could take the exam first, and then and then get the experience to then be officially CISSP certified. So I'm gonna see what makes the most sense for my career, whether it is to get the CISSP certification or if it's to get a different certification. And I think this also goes into what area of cybersecurity that I want to focus on next. I've mentioned this before, but I enjoy being a generalist, but I also do want to learn skills and tools that are interesting to me, even if they are very broad. For example, right now I'm trying to pick up some reverse engineering skills and I actually worked on a capture the flag, a reverse engineering capture the flag with my team. And honestly, I already knew this, but I definitely have a very long way to go. I probably spent half the CTF just learning and looking at courses about the tools itself that I had to use. Um, a few examples are Ghidra, Ida, I use a free version, and a few other decompilers and debuggers that kind of trialing and testing online. I kind of jump back and forth between all these different tools and trying to see which ones work and trying to see which ones that were more useful depending on the problem I was solving. And that's also one of my goals in general for this year. So yeah, I think that's probably the main skill set that I want to pick up. Um, but obviously I still have to focus on my main work, which is outside of professional development. So it really is just all about balance. If you guys are interested in reverse engineering, let me know. Maybe I can do a beginner slash intro to reverse engineering video based on the things that I've currently learned so far. What is your favorite part of your job? So I've touched on this a little bit already, but I really think that it's my team. In the past, I've had experiences where I didn't know what to do when I didn't know an answer to a question. I didn't know who to ask on my team. I wasn't comfortable asking them. And in general, it was just heads down, like figuring things out on my own, especially because we're working remotely. And even sometimes with my manager where I didn't feel comfortable asking questions or I wasn't able to get in touch with them very often. So hands down, probably just the people that I work with. Um, and then what is your least favorite part of your job? So I actually mentioned this in one of the videos I recorded that we recorded for Lucas channel, which I can link down below. He is a software engineer and he is often featured on this channel. But typically working in cybersecurity, you're going to deal with a lot of telemetry or metrics. With that, there isn't always a good dashboard or a way to portray this data or the different metrics that are happening for the different events, progress that people are making and different things like that. There isn't a good way to portray that to upper management or the SLT or the senior leadership team. And in one of my rotations, I spent a lot of time in Excel spreadsheets, which I have never been very good at Excel. Um, my manager at the time was very good at Excel though, so she definitely helped me pick up a few things but personally excel was never my best friend i every time i felt like i feel like every time i touched an excel spreadsheet i was just wrestling with the data trying to make a pivot table or trying to v look up something it just honestly at the end of it i did get the hang of it i mean it's been a few years now since i've since i've worked on an excel spreadsheet so deeply and i do think that it's a very good skill to have so kudos to the accountants and the finance people out there who use excel on a regular basis as well as every other sector of course that touches excel but yeah i would say that's probably one of my least favorite parts of the job even though it's not currently what i'm working on i still use a little bit of excel but not very much and maybe for my current role i feel like maybe just meetings um i do think in general meetings can always be cut down or consolidated or maybe grouped up into specific days of the week instead of like having a no meeting Wednesday or a no meeting Thursday. 
something like that would be nice but i don't have too much negative feedback would you ever work in office again so to first start off answering this question i am a huge supporter of working remotely um, as well as working hybrid wherever it's applicable and i personally think that working remotely has has actually only made positive impacts on my life i know there's articles and people out there who would disagree especially for things like facetime with a manager or facetime with the team or just or just feeling isolated if you don't work in the same location as your team but but personally i don't feel very affected by those things and i love working remotely but to work in an office again i think that's something that I have thought of before, but not necessarily to a point where I would be working five days a week in the office. I would like it though, if I were to live somewhere near a corporate office for a company that I work for, then if I was able to go into the office whenever I wanted to, that would be really nice, I think. Um, there are days and times where I think I want a change of scenery and usually I just pick up my laptop and move over to a different table or just sit on the couch or something. But I've even considered going to a WeWork every once in a while, but obviously I don't want to pay a monthly WeWork subscription for something I'll only use once a month. But if a company were able to have an office and have the flexibility to allow me to come into the office whenever I wanted to, then I would actually appreciate that. But personally, I still prefer working remotely over anything. That may change down the line if something changes in my life and I want to see people more on a regular basis or something. Um, but I do have calls with my team almost every day of the week. so. I don't think that there's a big lack of connection. In fact, I think this is the most connected I felt to any team that I've been on. Yeah, so I think overall, there may be at one point that I want to go back to an office, but it wouldn't be every day and it would be, and it would be preferably on my own terms. What other tech roles would you go into if not cybersecurity? I would consider software engineering. I would consider data science or some data analytics roles, even data engineering. Um, I would consider I'll consider a bunch of freelance roles, specifically freelance writing. This one's kind of random, but I would love to be a manager for a Twitch streamer or something, um, or a YouTube streamer. I think that would be a really cool job to have. And personally, since I do things on YouTube and Instagram, I do manage my own brand collaborations and stuff like that. And I do all of my own outreach. I do all of my own pitching. I do all of my own negotiations. I don't know, all the legal stuff, the contract stuff, everything that has to do with that, I do for myself. So, and I'm a huge fan of offline TV and just the Twitch gaming community in general. And I think that would be really cool if I were to, maybe in another life, honestly, um, work as some kind of manager for a Twitch streamer or a YouTube streamer. I think that would be a fun thing to do. Tips for beginners to get into cybersecurity. So I actually have a lot of videos on how to get into cybersecurity as a beginner. I'll link a few of them down in the description below. But I really think it's about feeling out the areas in cybersecurity that are most interesting to you. For example, if the first experience that you have with cybersecurity is with is with blue team stuff and you're analyzing logs, you're analyzing network packets or network traffic, and maybe you don't find that very interesting and that just completely shut you off from cybersecurity. But, but it really is about just trying out a whole bunch of different things. Um, Maybe you're not into blue team, but maybe you're into red team and maybe you're into capture the flags and solving challenges and hacking into things because they use very different sides of your brain slash very different skills and tool sets in general. So if you've always been curious about cybersecurity, but, but maybe you don't know exactly what you want to get into, try to find a intro to cybersecurity course. There's a lot of them on YouTube that are free and don't just go over to different domains of cybersecurity, like cryptography, malware, network security, all things blue team, red team, purple team. And I almost guarantee you that you'll find something that piques your interest at least a little bit and you can just kind of keep pulling at that string and seeing where that leads you and who knows it might lead you down a really fulfilling successful cybersecurity career all right so that's it for this video let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below i would personally also like to know where you guys are in your cybersecurity careers whether you're just starting out whether you're in college or in a boot camp whether you're in your early career whether you're in a whole nother field and are trying to break into cybersecurity i would love to know in the comments below don't forget to also check out our discord channel where you can meet everyone else in the community and share different resources job opportunities and everything in between thank you guys so much for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications it would really help me in the channel if you're able to subscribe and like this video so that the youtube algorithm can share this video to other people who may be interested in getting into cybersecurity i post videos every wednesdays and sundays at 12 p.m and hopefully i'll see you guys in my next video bye